Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here, and in this episode of Zig Master, we're going to be uh, doing what I'm going to call a concept video, um, video to help us make a mental model when we're uh, dealing with low-level programming, and specifically low-level programming in Zig. This uh, first concept video, we're going to be talking about data in memory. So let's get started. First of all, we have the topic of memory units. Um, computer memory accessible to your running program or the process as it's known by the operating system uh, is going to be divided into memory units uh, and in most modern architectures the smallest uh, memory unit that can be assigned an address is going to be the byte okay even though a byte can have uh, eight bits inside of it and each one of those bits uh, can represent some valuable valuable information the, the smallest uh, unit that we can address at the hardware level, at memory level, is the byte, okay? So, uh, Zig offers tools to handle, uh, manipulate the bits within a byte, uh, but at the memory level, once again, the smallest unit is the byte, okay? Now, uh, when we bind uh, or, or declare a variable, here we have the variable v with type u8, which is an unsigned 8-bit integer. We're assigning it the initial value of 16. I have this uh, representation uh, here. It's it's like this uh, rectangle. And this rectangle, you're going to see, that has uh, this area up here that represents this binding that's going to occur with the identifier V and the data type U8. Here in the center, we're going to have the value written to that byte. In this case, it's just one byte required. It's a U8. So the value 16 here in decimal is going to be written right directly here. And this bottom part is a demonstration of uh, the address assigned to this memory unit, uh, to this byte specifically. Um, usually, uh, addresses are going to be uh, larger than this. Um, for example, in most architectures these days are 64 bits, so you, so you have a pretty big address uh, consisting of eight bytes. But um, for, for demonstration purposes, that's irrelevant. Uh, all we need to know is that each one of these memory units is going to be assigned a different address, okay? So this would, this would represent, okay, uh, what's, what's going to happen with this uh, line of code. Uh, it's going to be compiled basically into uh, instructions to uh, store this value, uh, first allocate, uh, the necessary memory, in this case, the data type tells us we need to allocate one byte. We'll write the value 16, and then we bind this uh, identifier and data type to this address, okay? Now, um, if we have uh, another data type, for example, a U32, we, we see the importance of data types in a, in a statically type language, low-level program, programming language where you have manual memory management well data types are really important because they're, they're going to basically dictate how much memory is going to be used each time you are declaring a variable in this case uh, a u32 is a 32-bit unsigned integer if we divide 32 uh, by 8 bits in one byte we're going to obtain four bytes so we need four bytes for this uh, value here to be stored even though it's the same value 16 we need four bytes because the data type is a u32 and here we're seeing these uh, representations of uh, uh, empty memory memory that hasn't been initialized this is the memory that's going to be required um, and, and I uh, added this little atomic icon here because <laughs> Uh, uninitialized memory can be dangerous. Uh, it can be the cause of, of different problems, uh, including security vulnerabilities and things like that. So uh, when when the memory is uninitialized, um, it, it, it would be an error to access it, to try to read it. Um, so in this case, when we are declaring this variable, this is basically what's going to happen. As you can see now, the memory has been written to uh, we have that these four bytes that are the component bytes of this u32 uh, we we have the binding at the very first byte which could be known as the base address of this uh, span of memory 
And uh, since it's a U32, we need four bytes, as we said. Here, we have the first byte that has the value 16 that we were assigning, and then we have three zeros. This is basically uh, the representation of this 32-bit integer in uh, Little Indian, where the, uh, the least significant bit um, goes at the end. So in this case, um, we have the, the 16 is located at the first byte, and then we have the three zeros following it. If it was a big Indian machine, we would have the three zeros and uh, the 16 in the, the last byte. Okay, um, But that's uh, basically uh, an internal detail of how the, the data is written out to memory. Um, the, the, the issue at hand here is that when we um, declare this variable with this data type, um, behind the scenes, all of this is occurring. We have to allocate enough space. In this case, it's four bytes. And the first byte with the first address is going to have this binding to the identifier and the data type. And we only need to know this first address because with the data type, we know how many other bytes are uh, part of this uh, memory region that we, we have to read or write to. So with just the first address, the base address, and the data type, that's all we need. We can derive the rest, OK? Now um, we have the topic uh, in Zig specifically. Uh, we have this undefined keyword, as we saw in previous videos. Uh, we can declare a variable and leave it undefined. In this case, what's going to happen, as we will see here, we do have, once again, the binding. We have the allocation of the necessary space, but that space will remain uninitialized. Okay, so that's what we see here, the atomic icons. Uh, if you're going to be reading that value later on in your program, uh, you have to first make sure to initialize that memory with an actual value, okay? And Zig has in debug mode, which is the default mode when you build your project and you don't specify any release uh, mode, um, it will write these bytes uh, with, with the hexadecimal value uh, of AA to help you out when you're debugging. If, you, if your program has a bug due to accessing undefined memory and you open it up in a debugger, you will see uh, that, that maybe some variable has uh, this value inside of it and that will tell you, that will give you a hint that, that this variable is uninitialized, okay? Uh, you probably set it as undefined and you never initialized it and you were trying to read it, okay? So um, this is a helpful aid that Zig has in debug mode. Also, there are some compiler errors that will tell you also, will mention that there was an error that occurred at memory address uh, 0xAAAA, things like that. And now you know that it's probably due to accessing undefined, uh, uninitialized memory, okay? And uh, last uh, but not least, we saw uh, in the previous video how we can define arrays and use arrays in Zig. Well, this is how an array would basically look like in memory. Um, this binding here, once again, we have V this time. It's an array of three U16s. Uh, each U16 is 16 bits uh, divided by eight. It's two. We need two bytes. And here we have, once again, the little Indian representation of 16 in two bytes. We have a 16 and a zero. And let's say that we initialize this with 16, 17, and 18. So the second element, 17, zero. And the third element, 18, 0. Okay, and here we have the addresses incrementing one byte at a, at a time. And um, all, all we need, once again, is this first base address and uh, the data type, which will tell you then if uh, uh, we have three elements that each one requires two bytes, so we need six bytes total. Okay. And when we do this indexing operation, which is basically syntax sugar, for performing a calculation starting at the base address, if we want to go, for example, to the second element, okay, well, we're going to multiply um, that number of bytes uh, with 
the index that we're accessing. In this case, second element has index one. So it'll be two times one. That gives us two. So we move over two bytes and we arrive at the base, uh, base byte of that second element. Okay. In the case of the first ones, it's zero, two times zero, and we stay right here at the base address. And the same thing for the third element, okay? So just by having the base address and the data type, even in the case of arrays, um, this is all the information that we need to access the array itself or any of its elements. And uh, Zig's uh, indexing operation will do that behind the scenes, okay? So this is basically what I wanted to cover um, starting out this this series of, of concept videos that we're going to be seeing more of. Um, I wanted to touch on these initial concepts. It's uh, there, There's going to be other concepts, for example, when we talk about structs and other data types in, in Zig, we're going to be looking also at how they uh, look when they are written out to memory or when you need to access them. So I hope you find this useful to the builder. I'll see you in the next one.